Still tough days in the NFL to come. A lot of answers that aren't there right now, and we expect that they won't be. This is Locked on NFL on Wednesday. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This is Tony Wiggins along with Lauren Cox, my man Lauren Cox, sitting there for James Rapine today as James handles family business. I have to let you know that today's show is an episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free bonus boost to boost their franchise when using the promo code locked on which is in all caps locked on get in the game y'all get in that game lauren what's going on with you man hey i appreciate you having me on although i wish i wish we were on to talk about something more fun as a primary topic here but it's it's really important that we, we do keep talking about this and i mean it's there's nothing bigger going on in the nfl right now that's for sure nothing nothing so we we thank you for making us your first listen and reminding you we're free on all platforms I'm going to need your help here because I'm still practicing my breathing, Lauren, from my own uh, issues. But the issues that I have pale in comparison, obviously, to those of Damari Hamlin, the wonderful young defensive back for the Buffalo Bills, who we all saw on Monday night, have um, – I, I don't even know how to explain it. It was um, – he got injured, and then uh, it got worse while he was on the field. And I want to make sure I give it the, the amount of respect that is due and it's still the topic of a lot of discussion around the league, and it should be. We won't have all the answers here, right? But we will bring up some interesting questions, and we we know you as the fan have some things that sometimes you just want to hear something. You want to hear people handle the things with care that need to be handled. And um, right now, a quick uh, update on Damari Hamlin. I don't want to sound like a doctor because I'm not. At the time of this recording, he's still in critical condition. His family's putting out statements. They're uh, remaining hopeful and optimistic that things turn out well for him. And unfortunately, um, there's some other stuff that, that have to, has to be talked about with this. But I got to ask you something. man. Have you ever, ever seen anything like this? No. And it, it struck me, too, that how the the entire sports world kind of stopped for this. I mean, obviously, the, you know, things are still going on, but just how this seemed like the kind of sports story that has expanded beyond sports, that there are people in, in certainly in my life, and I'm guessing in yours and people listening to this, that you wouldn't normally have a conversation about football with, but maybe they know that you like football. And, it, you know, it's it's the, it's the aunt or uncle that's not really into sports, or it's, you know, it's the coworker that never talks to you about sports. And it's like, hey, sure you about that, that kid on the bills or, or that on the field that had that heart thing last night. I mean, it's, it's that kind of like, you know, like regular news story, not just a sports news story, but it's like, it's in front of everybody in a way that really I think has captured how large of an event and how just seismic this is because it, it I mean, it's, it's literally life and death, but it, it reverberates beyond the sports world to the non sports people in our lives. And I think it really, to me, that's what put it in such the context of, of how different it is. We, we've seen injuries before where players are carted off the field, where players take a knee around other players, even injuries where players start crying while the other players are still recovering. But th there's something about how close to the line of death and maybe, you know, if his heart stopped, maybe he it's possible he did die temporarily on the field. And, and that, that that level of magnitude expands so much farther beyond sports that really S sets this one apart from anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, on my Jaguars podcast, I did mention um, as a kid watching uh, Ray Bumbo Mancini fight Dooku Kim on TV. And uh, he won by TKO. Kim stood up, fell out, and then never woke up again. And that resonated with me as a, as a child because even though football is a gladiator sport and boxing is a gladiator sport, you almost expect the worst to happen in a boxing match because they're actually in there. Football hurting each other is a byproduct of 
protecting real estate, boxing, they're in there to slug each other mm -hmm. and punch each other in the face. So um, in, in that case, it was a matter, it was just, it was a what they call a war. These guys were going back and forth. I recall Ali talking about the, the third installment with Joe Frazier, the one that folks don't talk about very much, or it may have been the Thriller in Manila. It may have been uh, the the second fight or the third fight was Thriller in Manila. That he was on his stool about to quit, and they and Frazier quit almost. They said he's not going to keep going, and Ali is the one that went to the hospital and had to stay in the hospital. It's the warrior spirit that these guys just these gladiators they they want to go and they want to go, and that's how they're built. Well, in football, you don't expect, and in in the pantheon of hard hits, we've seen hard hits the last few days in Ohio State, Georgia game. It looked totally terrible. It looked when uh, Marvin Harrison got hit in the end zone, and he left the game with a concussion. The one last night in in the when you think about the hits over the year, it didn't look bad. Mm -hmm. It did. It was like it didn't look bad, but then you look at it, he fell in his helmet, and I don't know at what point. He received the blunt force trauma. Was it the contact? Was it when he fell? Sometimes we have to learn from stuff like it doesn't have to look bad to be bad. And that's, that's what's so scary about it, right? Is that it felt like a routine football play. It's not like like that was not the kind of plays that the NFL talks about. We need to eliminate those plays from the jacked, game. Jacked up, jacked up, right? Yes. Like the, the, everything the NFL has attempted towards player safety you know, isn't necessarily directly involved with plays like this. Cause it's, this is what you know, safer football was supposed to look like. And it feels, it makes it so, so much scarier because it feels like there's not a, a clear like solution there. It's like, Oh, well you can't just further penalize hits to the head or further, you know, ch change the helmets or things like that. Like there's not just that clear, like, Oh, we need to just take that hit out of the game because that hit was the game. It is. And it was, and I'm glad you brought that up because in segment two, we're going to talk about just that. We're going to talk about what can the NFL do. And this one, I've wrapped my head around it. And um, it's easy to come up with and it, 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 when you're being emotional. It's really, really easy to come up with stuff and to say things that sound good and that can win the ear of the people. But if it's not tangible and if it's not real, then you're just doing the players that play this game a disservice. So, Let's have that discussion, which is a very difficult one to have. What can the league actually do if they can do anything to make this game safer? We'll get into that in segment two here on a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. This Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL is brought to you by our new partners and sponsors, Ultimate Football GM. It's a mobile game that you play on your phone that puts you in complete control of an NFL franchise. If you've ever dreamed about being an NFL GM, this game is definitely for you because you get to manage every aspect of your team on the field and off the field. You know, you're signing coaches, you're signing free agents, you're going through the draft, you're dealing with sponsors and ticket prices, injuries, off the field incidents, and so much more, all in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and it's playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. I found myself laying in bed literally last night trying to go to bed and ultimately trying to get a couple more weeks in through the offseason on my team. I was like, well, the draft was coming up. I was like, okay, I can't – I got to go to sleep. I can't go through the full NFL draft. It's it's a little bit addicting, and I highly recommend it for any real football fan. Lockdown NFL listeners get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use our promo code Locked On in the game store. That's all caps, Locked On. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. We've had a good 48 hours now for this, this well, 24 as we're recording this, for the injury situation to kind of settle in. And, and I think now, Tony, as we continue locked on NFL Wednesday, the question you start, the next question starts to be, well, what happens next? You know, you certainly no one wants to rush anything with, with Bar Hamlin himself and what's going to happen with his health, you know, certainly, but start the question like, okay. First of all, does this does this Bengals Bills game get played again? Sounds like certainly not this week. The NFL has come out and said for sure. We've heard some people ask, should they cancel every game this next week and give every player the week off because they just watched a player almost die on the field? And do they then push the playoffs back a week? Do they eliminate that bye week before the Super Bowl? And then what can they do as a result of this? What changes to make sure that we don't have a DeMar Hamlin situation 
happen again. Is it preventable or what what can the NFL do here? What should the NFL do if they make Tony Wiggins NFL commissioner tomorrow? I would listen to the players. I would listen to the guys that are out there. Um, I, I, I think those the players last night, from what I understand, and I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to step in here and try to bash the process in the NFL and the timing and when they decided and who decided what they were going to do because the precedent has been set. Hank Gathers died on the basketball court and they kept playing. You know, we've had guys who couldn't even move and who had involuntary movement of their legs and limbs and ligaments and they kept playing. So uh, I, I think there are people that are designed and, and that have a job that when no one else is thinking about this stuff, this is your job. Like when, like when we lose family members and everyone's grieving, there's always that one person that takes charge and says, well, everybody's grieving. I'm going to make sure everybody has proper nutrition because that's very important. And everyone is hydrated and all of these things need to happen. Everyone has that one family member that kind of kicks in the gear and they take over and do those type things because that's what they do. The NFL has a person for that. And their protocol is not just to stop the game. Their protocol is to stop the game and then have an answer for why you did everything that you did, right? I do, however, believe that last night the total cancellation of the game was nine times out of ten precipitated by the players. They said we can't go. I think what happens from here moving forward is going to be by the players. Now, I want to emphasize that I mean the Buffalo Bills, but I'm not going to be naive and say that all players from around the league don't grieve for this. And all players around the league and the Bengals who were right there on the field that and T. Higgins and that they don't have a, a similar feeling because they're a fraternity that we don't understand because we've never done it. Even former players. I saw former players breaking down because they've been there and they understand what these guys are going through. I think the Buffalo Bills players and coaches with the extended invitation of the rest of the players in that fraternity, I think they'll decide how we move. And I think if the league is smart, they'll lean on them and say, this is your show. This is what you do. Whatever you're comfortable with, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to move forward. Some of that may depend on um, the health of Damar Hamlin and, and how these guys feel like they need to function and move forward. I'll tell you something that's happened though. Something that has happened in my opinion is I, I think over the years, there's been, there's been a lot of dehumanization of athletes, whether it's football players or basketball players. And I think they're just here at, to, to quote good fellas. I'm just here to amuse you. <laughs> and, and, and I'm here to amuse you and I make a lot of money doing it, so I need to just be happy. Well, we forget that these people are human beings with families that take risks that we don't take, and they get paid for those risks. Just like a guy who paints a bridge get paid more money than the dude who paints a hallway. It's just it's it's just what it is. So yeah. my my thing is is I get paid to cut hair and, and talk and do podcasts, and I'm, and I get a pension from the military. So it's not like I'm sitting here and taking risks every day. But I do think there's always a silver lining in every, I don't want to call it a disaster, but hurricane, hurricane relief brings out the best in us. Um, our tragedies that we suffered in New York and Boston and other places have brought out the best in us. I think I've seen a transformation, and I hope it lasts, of the fan. The fan has now said, you know what? We need to call a timeout on fandom. This is about all of them. This is about everyone. This is horrific. This is like the thing that we do that we enjoy the most. These guys, this guy almost lost his life or, or potentially is in a dangerous situation. And it hurts people and it affects people. So I, I've, I've been very, very, it's nothing to be pleasant about or pleased about, but I've been very, very surprised in a, in a good way of how most fans that I've seen, especially on social media, have handled this. And they don't have any reason to be politically correct. They're just saying and doing all of the right things. So while they're looking for us to give them something, I'm getting more from them because it's like, I see, I see compassion that I don't normally see every day. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you used the word grieve earlier there for the players. Cause I think that's part of this humanization process because we don't, we don't talk about grief enough and, and i think it's important for us to remember too that like just because 
he didn't die doesn't mean there's nothing to grieve here. And that grief is about loss, but it doesn't have to be permanent loss. And it certainly doesn't have to be death. And I think what players are grieving is that the loss of almost this, this, the illusion of, of safety in football, right? The loss of that, that these guys step out there every day, sort of fooling themselves that, Oh, I'm not going to get hurt on this play. I'm not going to get hurt in this game. You have to, you have to treat every play like you're not going to get hurt. And certainly like your heart's not going to stop. And I think that that sort of self delusion that's necessary for the confidence to play professional football was lost momentarily in that moment. And I think that's part of what people and players in the league are grieving. It's grieving that sort of confidence, grieving that sanity, that feeling of safety, that feeling like you can play football and maybe you're going to get hurt, but you're going to be okay. And all of a sudden it's that stark reminder in your face that, Hey, actually maybe I won't be like, there's, there's a chance that a routine hit just like that could hit me in the chest and stop my heart. And we don't know, but we don't know the full details of what's been going on with, with Lamar Hamlin and, and, you know, if he had any kind of you know, pre-existing conditions or something, but I think it still is that sort of wake up call that players are going to have to grieve through that their reality of how they play football has been shaken by this incident. And there's a grieving process to that, the loss of what they thought their reality was, even if it's not grieving an actual quote unquote death, like we might think. No, you're exactly right. Uh, what can the league do? I'm going to tease this a little bit. And other than wait for the players to give them their cue for the rest of the season, but moving forward, I'm going to tease this a little bit because we're going to go into segment three. I don't know specifically, like it, it always, it, it's always very, very, you have to be careful when you think, okay, what can they do to prevent what happened last night? Uh, nothing. I, I don't know. It's, it's football. I don't know if there's something that they could do because I, I don't think you can anticipate that that sort of injury. Like I said, it wasn't – man, I've seen a thousand hits worse than that that appeared to be worse, right? What can they do? i tell you what some things that they can't do, and we'll talk about it in segment three. During this new CBP, the CBA agreement that they're – let's put the business hat down and take care of your people. And I'm not – implying that the league doesn't i'm saying get rid of the the specter of there even being a question that you're not taking care of your people while they're in the league after they're in the league after they're gone from from playing uh with testing with understanding cte with understanding all of the conditions that apply see this is the hidden thing and you know what i'm gonna do i'm, I'm gonna get into it because i'm gonna, I'm gonna compare it to the military in just a second and, and 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 I'll draw some parallels to it because that is for me is very very personal and I think the league uh, should take a little bit of the same approach. Uh, today's show is sponsored and brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. If you're a small business owner or a hiring manager, you need to know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. Now, I opened two barbershops in the past, and I got, I used LinkedIn, and I got just about perfect matches for the folks that I wanted to hire. And guess what? It worked out long-term for me, and it can work out for long-term for you. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and connect with them for free. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. One word. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Moving right along here on the third and final segment of Locked on NFL. I have to tell you, we thank you for making us your first listen. Make your second listen to Locked on Sports Today show with Peter Bukowski. It's 30 minutes of fast packed action with the use of local experts to explain every single thing that's going on around the world of sports. You can find it wherever you get your podcast and it's also free on all platforms. Um, to prevent those things directly, I don't think you can do anything about it. 
I do think, though, you can put your best foot forward as a leader to leave out any question that they're going to take care of their people. I, I meant, mentioned the military pension earlier. There's some feelings that it's a little patch and go when you're in the military, that the goal is to make sure you get patched up as quickly as possible and put back to work. Well, sometimes we have long-term injuries, right? That, you know, not to say that the care was poor, but that the mission was to make, to, to put you back to work. I think in the NFL, the parallel that I'm talking about is there's this underlying rule and we've all heard it being around the game. Your lack of ability, your, your best ability is your availability. You can't make the club in the tub, right? So subconsciously, guys want to make sure that they power through stuff. And these are gladiators that we're talking about, right? I'm not saying that that's going to disappear. What I am saying is make sure that when these guys are done, let's not act like they didn't do that for you. Let's not pretend that the gladiator mentality did not exist. Let's not pretend that the coach was kind of pressuring this dude or other teammates are saying, dude, we need you. Come on. How many times has fa have fans or how many times have you done a radio show? Or I've done a radio show where we've called a guy soft. I remember, I think it was either Danian Tomlinson and Jay Cutler. I remember Jay Cutler had a torn meniscus and they said he could have played. Right. And we're not talking about arthritis. We're not talking about the effects long term that these guys and they say, well, they get paid a lot of money. I think one thing that the owners can do is to acknowledge that there's a whole nother world that exists with what they expect from players, acknowledge it by making sure the players are taken care of without question whether or not it's enough insurance after they're gone from the game. Do you think owners actually will? Do you think owners actually have an incentive to do so? Like, don't, don't I, I could see cynically, and I'm doing this on purpose, that the league looks at this and says, well, yeah, it's a really big deal right now, but you know, three months from now, everyone's going to be talking about free agency. And six months from now, everyone's going to be talking NFL draft. And by the time CBA negotiations come around, we might remember the name Hamlin for, for just historical purposes. But will it still be top of mind? Or is this the latest sports story in the NFL that will just blow over and the league can go back to being, you know, greedy and, and trying to get as much money as they can for themselves and maybe not apply as much money towards, you know, taking care of the players. Cause all that is just extra, extra money out of the owner's pockets. And they don't tend to want to do that unless there's a very real financial consequence for not doing so. And I'm wondering if the public pressure, both from the players and from you know the fan base as well, because those are the customers, you know, will, will the customers care enough to pressure the league into making real substantial changes as a result of this? Or is this just the latest scary injury that we look back on and say, yeah, that was scary, but nothing really changed from? I, I think those fans that I depend on, that, that I said that have shocked me and surprised me, can play a big part in that. How many times have you seen fans call players greedy when there's no deal and they're holding out mm -hmm. and some of those same people, the second the players agree to it and then they have a grievance a year later goes, well, you signed the deal dummy. Mm -hmm. The same folks, you call them greedy. See this all centers and goes back to fandom at the expense of people's bodies. I think fans and players alike can remember this. And sometimes it takes something this bad. And if I could take it away that that kid was laying on that field in front of his family last night, having to be resuscitated, I would. And I'm not, I'm not celebrating that. But what I am from, everything is, is a learnable moment and a teachable moment, even for rich people, right? <laughs> that, look, we might not be able to prevent that, but what we can do is we can make, ease the mind of the people who are taking risks to create wealth for us and themselves and create uh, our what I believe is our national pastime right now because people love football. We can make sure that those risks come with them not being forgotten. And at least, you know, you're making an informed decision without any argument that, okay, this is the decision I'm making. It doesn't take away from if something happens, but I took this risk and the, and the reward was maximized as opposed to the reward being something that I have to fight somebody for. It and just, I, to me, it just feels bad when you have to fight someone for it, it, the way I come from, you take care of your people. Yeah. Just take care of your people. 
And I ain't trying to sound like a mobster or a gangster, but that's <laughs> just, but that's just what it is. Take care of your people that take care of you. You feel me? Yeah. And you, well, you mentioned in an informed decision there. And I think that's the other aspect of this too, that seeing this injury, I think greater informs players of like, of the risks. And I think that's another area that the NFL and the players association can look to in an area like this, not only yes, ensuring that there are better protections and safeguards for players on the back end after they go through the risk that you, you just can't eliminate that risk fully in the sport of football, but also on the front end, doing even more to make sure that every player that comes into the NFL and even college football is truly aware of the risks. I mean, everybody knows football is a dangerous sport and that, that you can get injured, but I don't know that every player fully grasps the long-term impact that you were saying you were talking about there with like cutler and, and, and arthritis and meniscus and and the kind of things that as a player you don't you're not thinking about when you're trying to decide do i go back out there do i play through this or do i not and the nfl can do so much more to make sure that players are truly informed when they're making that decision do i play this game do i not do i enter the nfl do i not do i play college football do i not to make sure that okay we're going to take care of you and you know fully what you're getting into and you're not going to look back later after your career. And like, like a guy like Sam Shields recently said, yeah, if I could go back, I wouldn't play football. I wouldn't have played in the NFL. I don't like what it did to my body. And I didn't realize fully how bad this was going to be on me. And I think that's what the NFL can prevent. They can't prevent the injuries, but they can prevent the players feeling like they were maybe not misled, but just under-informed about what their risk was playing in the National Football League. Absolutely. And to put all of this in a nutshell for this show, we had a segment that we were going to do in segment three where we we're going to talk about legit Super Bowl contenders. I can't do it. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, this is live. This is as butt naked as you're going to get it. We, I can't do it. it we're not going to do it. And uh, it, I, we need more information on, on uh, Brother Hamlin. We need to figure out. We, we're going to, I'm going to wait on the cue for the players, from the players, to decide when we – they're the ones out there doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait on the cue from them to decide when it's okay for us to continue to talk like media people and fans. And right now our thought is with him and them, in my opinion, it, it's with him and it's with them. And I never want to say that the season will get canceled or anything like that, but this, this situation is, is unprecedented. So I think with an unprecedented situation, you have to have unprecedented action um, after the situation. And when you ask me, would the owners do this or would the owners do that? I'm looking for some unprecedented action here from some people that run this league. And, and, and not it's not the kind of action that is unrealistic or it's just emotional. I want something, something in the form of, look, we are one, we are together, we're in this together. Without the players, there is no league. I, I just need to see something. I need to see something, and I need to see uh, the players feel like it's okay for 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 us to. It's okay for me to to want Derrick Henry to get clipped, a, a you know, a yard short of the first down, and to get a hit across the bow and pushed out of bounds, and for the Jaguars to play physical. I'm not there yet with it being okay for a, a, a Andre Cisco to protect real estate and to jar the ball away from Traylon Burks on a crossing route, a crossing route. I'm just not there. And I hope to be, I hope to be because I love the game. I love what the game has done for all of us. I love the game, what, what, what the game has done for so many people in their lives, but it, it also scared the hell out of me last night. And I don't scare easily. I want to see something more substantial than just all 32 teams, social media accounts, changing their picture to Hamlin's jersey, but actually do something that, like you said, can restore that faith in football again that's been shaken for pretty much all of us. No doubt about it. Thank Lauren Cox for sitting in for my buddy James Rapine, who I said is taking uh, some time. Obviously, he was at the game tonight covering for the Bengals, but he also has some other uh, pressing business. Um, Lauren is always grateful. He's my, I got to tell him, he used to be my cigar buddy. I can't smoke cigars anymore. Ugh. So so I'll just stand back like Smokey and Friday when Craig was blowing smoke and Smokey just went like that, right? I'll just do one of those numbers, but... I'll, I'll take all of yours and take very good care of them. Don't worry. I can't drink single malt anymore either. But, you know, that's the whole... I know, I know, I know I'm disappointing you, man. I know I'm disappointing you, but... 
more important uh, things than that, man. Yeah, lemon water, lemon water, right? And uh, I'm still funny. I'm funny without the alcohol. So <laughs> I'm going to still curse and tell stories that you can't tell nobody about. So <laughs> yeah, we'll get together and do that hopefully one day soon. But for Lauren Cox, Tony Wiggins, make sure you check him out at Cox Sports One on social media and me at Shop Talking Wig for Locked On NFL on a Wednesday. Y'all take care of each other, man. And hopefully we'll get back in our groove and Damari Hamlin will be just fine. And the players will give us the permission to move on like we always have um, when it comes to football. Until then, you guys take care of each other and we'll see you next time.